Dragon of Ice Spire Peak Tower of Storms Tower of Storms is not connected to any quest, though one of the entries in the Phandalin Tales table might lure the adventurers there. This location is balanced for characters of third level, but lower level characters can survive if they're cautious and rest often. Before running this location, review the underwater combat rules in the rulebook. Location Overview The Tower of Storms is more than just a lighthouse. It's a temple dedicated to Talos, the evil god of storms. Mosko, the half-orc anchorite who guards the lighthouse, uses its pulsing beacon to draw ships to their doom. For the light acts as an irresistible lure to passing seafarers who sail too close to the shore. The source of the beacon's eerie green light is Masoko's own heart, which was torn from his chest in a ritual. If the heart is destroyed, the beacon's light goes out. The lighthouse is built atop a barren 80-foot high outcropping of rock. At low tide, a narrow causeway extends from the shore to this outcropping, allowing easy access to the lighthouse. This causeway is 5 feet above sea level at low tide. At high tide, the causeway and the sandy beach are submerged under 5 feet of water. Travel to the Lighthouse The Tower of Storm stands along the coast, roughly 35 miles west of Phandalin. If the characters leave Phandalin at dawn, they can reach the high road by nightfall and spend a long rest camping nearby. As the characters travel west of the high road the next day, they see a storm brewing out to sea. By the time they reach the 100-foot high cliffs overlooking the lighthouse and the Sea of Swords, the thunderstorm has reached the coast. Arrival The characters arrive at low tide when the causeway leading to the lighthouse is above sea level. Describe the location to the players as follows. Below the sea cliff that hugs the coastline, an outcropping of rock is nearly surrounded by water with only a narrow causeway connecting it to the beach below. Atop this outcropping is a stone building surmounted by a lighthouse tower. An eerie green light pulses from this beacon, shining westward out to sea. With each green pulse of light, you hear the thump of a slowly beating heart. Characters searching for a safe way down the cliffs Discover a staircase carved into a narrow fissure. They can follow these steps all the way down to the shore just east of Area T1. Crawling along the beach as they arrive there is a giant crab. The crab waves its claws at the characters, who can interpret its behavior as a friendly gesture with a successful DC-13 Wisdom Animal Handling check. A sea elf named Myral used magic to imbue this creature with an intelligence of 10 and the ability to speak common. If the characters approach it peacefully, the crab says, Well met, and tries to strike up a conversation, during which it imparts the following information. Evil harpies nest atop the rocky outcropping. There are sharks in these waters, but the one to fear is a mean old brute named Dagamore. She'll bite your head off and take pleasure in it. Five shipwrecks are spread around the rocks beneath the lighthouse. I'll fetch treasure from one of these wrecks if you help me. Helping the Giant Crab If the characters agree to help the Giant Crab, it asks them to lay to rest its dead sea elf master, Meral, whose spirit haunts a nearby cave in Area T1. If the characters do so, the crab thanks them and makes good on its promise, Retrieving the plus one weapon from the wreck of the star-crossed lover, as described in the shipwreck's table. Tower of Storms Locations The following locations are key to the map of the Tower of Storms. Area T1 Haunted Cave Rough-hewn steps climb a seven-foot-high tunnel that passes all the way through a thirty-foot-tall natural pillar of rock. A damp, eight-foot-high cave encrusted with lichen is connected to this tunnel. The cave remains above sea level at high tide and is haunted by a banshee. The banshee, Morale, 
manifests as a ghostly elf with gills, webbed hands and webbed feet. It wears spectral garments that sway as though the undead is floating underwater. The Banshee can't travel further than a hundred feet from this cave, and thus can't reach the lighthouse. Morale was a sea elf killed by Mosko, who took her spellcasting focus, an opalescent conch, as a trophy. The Banshee demands that the characters retrieve the conch and bring it back to the cave, which will set her spirit to rest. It tries to kill the characters if they refuse, pursuing them as far as it can if they flee. Area T2 Plateau Rough hewn stairs climb the east face of the rocky outcropping. The harpies in Area T5 accost the characters as they climb these steps. See Area T5 for these details. At the top of the stairs, a rocky plateau spreads out some 80 feet above the water. Wooden doors leading to area T3 have rusty iron hinges and handles, as well as decorative lightning bolts carved into them. All other doors in the Tower of Storms are of similar construction and ornamentation. None of the doors are locked. Area T3 Foyer This 15-foot high room is empty. Through a dirty window in the south wall, the characters can see two ship masts jutting crookedly from the water. Area T4, Shrine of Talos. Describe this location to the players as follows. The walls of this 15-foot high room are adorned with frescoes that depict ships being tossed on stormy seas, with a dark and terrible god looming above them and smiling. Set into the west wall is a dirty salt-encrusted window, a stone altar with lightning bolts carved into it, stands against the south wall. A metal rod descends from the ceiling above the altar, splitting in two before it embeds itself into the stone. The smiling figure depicted in the frescoes is the chaotic evil storm god Talos, who can be recognized with the successful DC-15 intelligence religion check. Clerics of the Tempest Domain succeed on the check automatically. Through the window, the characters can see the broken masts of several sunken ships jutting from the water. Altar The lightning rod on the roof in Area T8 channels electricity into the altar, which converts that raw elemental power into magical energy. The first character to touch the altar gains the Charm of the Storm. Give that character's player the Charm of the Storm card. Charm of the Storm you become charged with power of the storm, to the extent that tiny sparks crackle in your eyes. You can cast the lightning bolt spell at third level as an action. Once used three times, the charm vanishes from you. Once the altar bestows this benefit, it can't do so again until it recharges. The altar recharges when the lightning rod on the roof in area T8 is struck by three bolts of lightning from a storm and channels that energy down into the altar. Lightning from other sources doesn't count. Area T5 Harpies Airy A ledge enclosed by a three-foot-high stone retaining wall serves as a nest for harpies. The harpies line their nests with rotting vegetation and the bones of previous meals, which they hunt up and down the coast. The number of harpies present equals the number of characters in the party, including sidekicks, up to a maximum of three harpies. A harpy reduced to ten hit points or fewer tries to fly away on its next turn, hoping to live and fight another day. Treasure Characters who search through the harpy's nest find a potion of water breathing. If the characters acquire this potion, give them the potion of water breathing card or they can reference it in the magic items listing. Area T6, Lighthouse Interior. A spiral staircase with an ornate stone railing climbs up the inside wall of this round stone tower. Each staircase landing is 20 feet higher than the one below it. Area T7, Mosco the Anchorite. This 15 foot high room has two north facing windows a barnacle-encrusted chair stands against the south wall. Sitting in the chair is Mosko, 
an anchorite of Talos clad in armor made from giant octopus hide. Resting in his lap is an opalescent conch that he took from Morale, the sea elf, as described in Area T1. Beneath his armor, Mosko has a hole in his chest where his heart used to be. If his heart, located in Area T9, has been destroyed, Moko is dead and slumped in the chair. Otherwise, he's alive and demands that the intruders leave the Tower of Storms at once or face his wrath. He attacks anyone who defies him, confident in his ability to defend the lighthouse. If Mosko is killed but his heart has not yet been destroyed, his body reforms in 24 hours, regaining all its hit points and becoming active again. The new body appears within 5 feet of the heart. Treasure Returning the opalescent conch to Area T1 dismisses the Banshee as its spirit is set free. The characters are then free to sell the conch. Lenine Greywind of the Lion Shield Coaster offers 125 gold pieces for it, or it can be sold for 250 gold pieces in a city such as Neverwinter. Area T8 Rooftop and Lightning Rod From this vantage point, the characters can see the shattered mast of five shipwrecks west of the lighthouse in areas T10 and T14. Enclosing the rooftop is a one-foot-high stone wall with a two-foot-high iron railing atop it. A similar railing circles the walkway of the lighthouse beacon in area T9, which is 20 feet above this area. Lightning Rod A 10-foot-tall wrought iron lightning rod reaches towards the sky. During a thunderstorm, lightning strikes the rod at random intervals as determined by the dungeon master and is channeled through the roof to the altar in area T4. A creature that happens to be in contact with the lightning rod when it's struck by a bolt of lightning must succeed on a DC 15 dexterity saving throw, taking 22 or 4d10 lightning damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. Area T9, Mosko's Heart. The pinnacle of the lighthouse beacon is partly open to the elements and surrounded by a narrow walkway topped by an iron railing. Three open arches allow the beacon's pulsating green light to spill westward over the sea. This light is so bright that any character who dares look directly at it is blinded for one minute. The light originates from Mosko's still beating heart which floats in the air five feet off the floor. The heart has been magically enlarged to ten times its normal size and is considered a small magic object with an armor class of ten, ten hit points and immunity to psychic damage. The heart can't be moved. If reduced to zero hit points, the heart's light goes out as the organ implodes and is destroyed, leaving no trace behind. Attacks made against the heart have disadvantage unless the attacker is immune to the blinded condition or the heart's light is blotted out by throwing a blanket over it, for example. Exploring the Wrecks West of the Tower of Storms are five sunken shipwrecks, areas T10 through to T14, with only their masts visible. Characters intent on searching the ships for treasure will need dark vision or magical light sources to see as the wrecks are submerged in murky 20-foot deep water. Characters atop the 80-foot high lighthouse outcropping might try to climb down its slope to reach the water. The slope has abundant handholds but is wet, so ascending or descending requires a successful DC-10 strength athletics check. A character who fails these checks slips and falls and lands in the water below, taking 1d6 bludgeoning damage per 10 feet fallen. Three 15-foot-long hunter sharks glide among the wrecks. Dagamore is the meanest and hungriest of the three, and it attacks characters without provocation after they finish searching two of the wrecks. If Dagamore wounds a character, that character's blood in the water attracts the other two sharks, which join the fray on Dagamore's next turn. Area T10 to Area T14 Shipwrecks the crews aboard these five vessels perished when the beacon's evil light compelled them to crash onto the rocky outcropping. Fish have picked clean their skeletal remains, which lie scattered about through the doomed vessels. 
three sharks patrol the wreckage, as described in Exploring the Wrecks. The shipwreck's table gives the name of each ship and the treasure that can be found within it. A character can spend an action searching the inside of a shipwreck. As part of that action, the character makes a DC-15 wisdom perception check, finding the ship's treasure on a success. Once the ship's treasure is found, nothing else of value can be retrieved from that wreck. If the item found is a locked chest, a character can use an action to search the wreck for a key to the chest, finding it with a successful DC-20 wisdom perception check. Conversely, a character can pick up the chest's sturdy lock with a successful DC-15 dexterity check using thieves tools. When a magic item is found and identified, give the players the corresponding magic item card, or they can reference it in the magic items listing. In the case of a plus one weapon in area T10, choose from among the weapons available, a plus one battle axe, a plus one longbow, a plus one mace, or a plus one short sword. Only one plus one weapon can be found, so choose a weapon with which at least one party member has proficiency. Shipwreck Table Area T10 The Star-Crossed Lover A plus one weapon of your choice found in the grip of a skeleton that used to be the ship's captain. Area T11 The Sea Urchin Starfish clinging to a locked chest filled with straw within which is packed a delicate 9-inch tall blue quartz statuette of a mermaid worth 75 gold pieces. Area T12 Van Glory Cloak of the many fashions worn by the skeletons of the ship's captain. Area T13 Golden Gull There is a locked chest containing 120 electrum pieces and 6 pearls, 100 gold pieces each, in a black silk pouch. Area T14 Orca Locked chest that holds a fully charged Wands of Secrets and a leather-bound spellbook that contains the wizard spells Blur, Charm Person, Comprehend Languages, Hold Person, Mage Armor, Sleep, and Spider Climb. 